Good morning, brothers and sisters. How are you doing? Hoping that you're doing okay in the Lord because today is another bright new day that the Lord has made and we are going to rejoice and be glad in it. And uh, in today's Bible study lesson, we're going to be focusing on this one very beautiful question here, which is always asked by many people. What is the new anointing? What is the new anointing? Okay, hope you've got a pen and a paper and your Bible. And then let's get started. Some Pentecostal and charismatic churches preach about having a new anointing. And this new anointing is said to be a new outpouring of God's Holy Spirit on the lives of believers, especially to them that experience more power, more joy, and more holiness. While there is plenty in the Bible about anointing, teaching Christians to seek new anointing is not necessarily biblical. However, well-meaning and spiritual surrounding the teaching may be. And uh, in examining the concept of the new anointing, Let's, let's back up to the Old Testament and work out uh, our way forward to the ministry of Jesus Christ and, and beyond. First and foremost, in the law, God gave instructions for making a sacred anointing oil. In Exodus 30 verse 25, the Bible says, And thou shalt make it an oil of holy ointment, an ointment compound after the art of the apotherach. Thekasi. <laughs> Actually, it's apothecary. Yes, that's, that's the word. It's a very <laughs> tough word there. It shall be a holy anointing oil. And this oil was, uh, we understand that this oil was to be used to anoint the tabernacle, the ark, the table, and its utensils, and the lampstand, and the altar of incense, the altar of burnt offering, and the lava, the Aaron, and his sons. Aaron and his sons were anointed in order to consecrate them so that they may serve the Lord as priests. Exodus 20 verse 41. And of course, throughout the Old Testament, we see that God commanded various people to be anointed as a symbol of those men's divine calling. And the prophet Samuel anointed Saul with olive oil. Do you remember this? And of course, gave him the promise. Think about this in First uh, Samuel ten verse one. It says, "Then Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said, it is not because the Lord has anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance. Is it not because the Lord has anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance?" Right? Later on, we see Samuel anointed David with a similar result. In 1 Samuel 16 verse 13, Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. So in these two examples, we see Saul and David being anointed as kings of Israel. We also see that the Spirit of God came upon them. And for this reason, oil or anointing is often seen as a representative or a representation of the Holy Spirit. And uh, anointing did, all, did not always involve a literal pouring of oil. The term anointed is also used in the Bible to describe someone God chose for a particular task. For example, the Persian king Cyrus, do you remember him? Is called God's anointed. In Isaiah 45 verse 1, the Bible says, Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden to subdue nations before him, and I will lose the loins of kings to open before him the two lived gates, and the gates shall not be shut. 
So you see, although no one actually poured oil on Cyrus, that Persian king was simply being declared as part, as set apart for the service of God. And Jesus bears the title Christ, which means anointed one. Jesus was set apart as the ultimate service of God. And uh, after Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, the Spirit of God descended on him like a dove. Right? In Matthew 3, 13 to 16, the whole story is documented there. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. And he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. Acts 10.38 Now, here is a wonderful truth. Under the New Testament in Christ Jesus, every believer is anointed by God for service. And every person who believes in Jesus Christ is forgiven and sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. The anointing you received uh, from Him remains in you. Look at what uh, the Bible says in 1 John 2.27. It says, But the anointing which you have received of Him abideth in you, and you need not that any man uh, teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you all things, and is truth, and is no lie. And even as it is taught you, you shall abide in him. Okay? Shall abide in him. Think about also Second Corinthians uh, 121 to 22 it says now he which establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us as God who has also sealed us and given the honest of the spirit in our hearts Hmm? we see here the teaching of a new anointing following salvation is not found in the Bible there's no place where we see the word new anointing The Bible never tells us to ask for the Holy Spirit to come upon us for the simple reason that He has already come. You're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Ephesians 1, 13, In whom you trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom you believed. You are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So you already have the Holy Spirit. And all believers are supernaturally and permanently anointed by the Holy Spirit. We are declared holy by the grace of God through faith in Jesus Christ. So those who teach uh, the new anointing have a tendency to seek uh, some showy supernatural experiences in their Christian walk. They just want to show out and things like that. And those who claim to have experienced the new anointing may yet wonder why they still find... uh, life a struggle and why sin still puts such a great fight on them. It is because every Christian walks in daily struggles and there is no special or new anointing that is going to change that. We are all anointed the moment we are saved. So when you hear about new anointing, hmm, be watchful on such kind of stuff because we don't see anywhere where it's mentioned in the Bible. And that's the end of our today's Bible study lesson. Hope it was a blessing to you. Hope you've learned something. You can always download these podcasts to listen later offline or to share to your friends and family. And don't forget to favorite and subscribe to our channel to always be notified whenever we post a new podcast. And likewise, if you'd like to support this ministry, please use the details in the description below. Otherwise, I hope to see you in the next one.